Hi, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my watercolour YouTube channel. This is my new Tuesdays weekly tips and techniques tutorials and I welcome all my subscribers and members for any suggestions they may have for my future tips and techniques tutorials. So I really hope you're going to enjoy it and find it helpful. So this tutorial is going to give you some advice on background washes and how to avoid hard edges, backgrounds and much much more and towards the end of this tutorial I'll show you how to put these techniques into practice with this gorgeous painting of this snowdrop. So shall we get started? This is the reference photograph I'm using and a link for this can be found in the description below but I'll be concentrating a lot on the background. You can paint the backgrounds either wet on wet or wet on dry. I'm going to start wet on wet which is the easiest of the two techniques. So on the left hand side here, I am sketching in the snowdrop with my HB pencil. I'm using Winsor & Newton's rough paper. It's 300 grams, it's on a watercolor block and it measures 14 by 10 inches. So this is actually sort of a quarter of that or even less. So it's quite a small little painting and I would advise all beginners, um, especially when you're painting large backgrounds, start on a smaller scale where you'll feel more in control. It will give you more time and it will build your confidence. The next important thing to do is mix up plenty of wash. What you don't want to do, especially when you're starting out in watercolour, is not make enough paint and then have to mix that while you're halfway through painting your background because the paint will start to dry and you'll have unequal sort of wetness so it'll be drier on your painting and too wet in the palette and we want the consistency to be the same. We're going to be painting wet on wet. So you want to make sure you have enough wash and you mix your washes before you wet your background with clean water and use a large brush to do this and take your time because you want that water to soak into the paper and it really absorbs into the membranes of the paper and so that it gives you more time. Watercolour is all about giving yourself time. So as you can see there, I'm getting plenty of water and I'm applying it to the paper and just really being careful not to wet the actual object. You just want to wet your background. So go very close up to the object. Finally, obviously, I'm doing this with a snowdrop, but take your time there because if you go over that, that will bleed, the paint will actually bleed then onto your flower or stem. So you've just got to be really careful. So do large areas first, the background, the larger areas. And when you come in, just do those smaller areas and then sort of go over everything again. Just make sure all the water has been absorbed into there. It may feel a bit like, you know, sort of time wasting, but it's worth it. As you can see here, I'm tilting just to get rid of any water and any puddles, any excess water can be problematic later and create uneven washes, is what, which we want to avoid because they create back runs. And I will talk about back runs later in this tutorial or what is known as cauliflowers or blooms. So I hope you'll find that helpful. So the next important thing to do is when you apply the paint to the background, always keep loading your brush so that it keeps the consistency the same. If you just use the same sort of load onto the painting until it runs out, the time you go back to load again, that would have dried a little bit on your painting. So it's most important to get fresh paint literally every stroke you go. You will have more control that, that way. It may not feel like you will, but you really will. And you will get luminous, transparent, gorgeous washes as well. Because I'm using violet and green, you may need to rinse your brushes in between these washes or have two, br two different brushes. You've got one for violet and one for green. But as you can see that I'm really loading my brush, really putting on this wet paint, wet into wet and just keep getting that fresh paint and sort of coming up now closer to the actual flower now. So do the large areas first and then the little details and the bits where you're cutting in leave that till the end if you start with this first of all you end up with a little outline that's dried so just do it that way and what I'm doing now is I've wiped off the excess moisture on my brush and I'm catching 
puddles and excess water and I'm doing this by tilting okay and if you notice there on the left hand side there's a really big puddle don't tilt too much that it actually rolls onto your painting so I'm actually just tilting now the other way to get that paint running off onto the right hand side there and you can remove the moisture with a um, kitchen towel like I'm using there or a damp brush to soak it up. But just make sure you get rid of all those puddles because they create back runs later because they stay wet longer. Your background is drying and what happens is as they start to dry and your background has dried, you start to get those blooms. It would be tempting now to get excess paint and start filling in these little bits as you come up close and cut into the flower. As you saw there, I wiped off the excess paint off my brush. So it's a damp brush. Then I will use the paint that's already on the painting and move it up to the edge of the snowdrop. And that way, I don't introduce any excess moisture and paint to which again might create backgrounds later so just use the paint that's on the paper already with your damp brush not a wet brush to avoid any backgrounds or hard edges so this next snowdrop I will be painting the background wet on dry which is slightly harder only because it's about the drying time. Wet on dry, your paint will dry that bit quicker. Wet on wet, you've got that wet surface and it gives you a little bit more time. So I'm just carefully drawing in this snowdrop here, the outline with my HB pencil, ready for the wet on dry technique. Again, a good tip for beginners is to start on a smaller scale. It just gives you more time. And again, mix up plenty of paint, more than you need, just in case you run out or come up against something you didn't think of. At least you've got plenty of paint. The most important thing when you're painting wet on dry in a background is to tilt your painting so you can see what we call the watercolour bead. So it's where all the paint sort of collects together at the end. And if you can see that, you know you're loading your brush correctly and you know you're putting plenty of paint on your paper. It's a good sign. So you can see a little bit of a watercolour bead there developing on my tilt there. I've actually washed my brush there and I'm actually now painting on on the violet color and I'm pushing that color wet into wet kind of up into the green there so there's a nice transition so try to have the paint the same consistency as you can so it's sort of it's a milky consistency this if it's if one's watery the other one's milky you can come into sort of little back runs later so um, this is kind of a milky consistency again you can see my watercolor bead on the left not enough on the right so this is where I want to really load my brush and have lots more paint on my brush otherwise the wash on the right hand side will dry quicker and I might put wetter paint into it later and again you could have back runs so this is what to avoid so if you can see that bead you know you're okay so just keep loading that brush I'm working my way down from top to bottom because obviously I'm tilting it to get the bead working very carefully around this snowdrop whoops <laughs> that's what you don't want to do but it does happen but uh, not to worry I never panic so just carry on doing what you're doing and you can always deal with that later either trying to lift it off or use some white paint if you stop there to try and fix it you may that things start to dry a little bit and you run out of time so I'm just going to carry on working my way down to the bottom
So I'm just finishing off at the bottom there. So tilt your painting and use your damp brush to collect the little bead at the bottom so it doesn't sort of seep back into the painting. Again, you can get backgrounds when that happens. So I'm using the paper towel here just to get rid of the excess and finish off. Remember, don't go back into a damp painting. That's where you get those horrible hard edges or back runs. So wait for your painting to dry before you do any more details. Once the shine's gone, stop painting. I thought it'd be quite nice to show you um, how you actually get a back run, just in case you want to put one in your painting. So put just wetter paint into damp paint and that's how you get a back run because of the inconsistency. So if you watch that top left hand corner, a back run is starting to develop. So it's really important not to go back into a damp or drying painting because you're going to get horrible hard edges or back runs. If you want to go back into a painting or you've missed a little bit, make sure your paint is drier or damper than the surface of the paper. If you've missed that window and the shine has gone, let the painting dry, wet it again with clean water and put the paint in and don't be tempted to go back. So I've just dropped another little bit of paint in there on the right hand side there. And again, that's too wet onto a damp sort of sort of semi drying surface and it does create all sorts of mishaps. So remember less is more, it really is. And I really hope this you found this useful and helpful. And I'm gonna show you now in a larger painting, um, putting all these sort of tips and techniques into practice. So I hope you find this helpful. So first things first, make sure you mix plenty of wash for your background so that you don't run out halfway through and have a panic. And then it, again, this buys you more time. It's really important. Next, wet your background and remember to take your time. Any excess puddles or anything like that, just remember to tilt and remove with your damp brush or paper towel. So I'm ready to apply my watercolors now. So I'm using a large brush, large area, large brush. So I'm really sort of loading my brush and sort of cutting in a little bit, but not too much because I'm gonna save that to the end, but really sort of don't waste any time here and certainly don't answer the door or make a cup of tea. You wanna be really focused on getting this paint on, especially if you're working on a larger scale and keep loading, loading, loading your brush all of the time, fresh paint, and try to keep the consistency the same. I've just swapped to a smaller brush here just to cut in a little, there's a really small area here, so I'm just cutting in there just to make sure I've got that in there. Um, and I'm using slightly creamier paint, so um, the creamier the paint sometimes, the less you're gonna have a back run. So that's really important. So it creates a little bit of dark here. I've turned the painting upside down actually, because sometimes when you're painting wet on wet, time is of the essence and you wanna get access to your painting. You wanna get near that object or subject. So I've turned it upside down so I can get closer to it if that makes any sense. So I'm just using this smaller brush just to go around a little bit of the edges there and just to paint carefully around. You can, remember you can finish off those little details at the end there, but if you're gonna paint like this, make sure the paint's slightly creamy so you don't get any back runs. So I really should have swapped back to my larger brush. Um, but again, you get so wrapped up in watercolor, you forget the real basics here. So do forgive me there. I should have swapped back to my bigger brush. Here's my bigger brush. So I'm just putting in the green now 
try to keep the consistency the same. I think mine is slightly watery there. I'm going to try and get away with it though. If you do do that, which can happen, is just make sure you do lots of tilting to try to sort of blend them all together. As you can see here, I'm tilting just to get rid of all those excess puddles and water, etc. with my paper towel. Tilting is a really good technique. So here we are. My background is sort of complete. I've wiped off all the excess paint. I'm working with a smaller brush and I'm just sort of blending here because it was sort of it that that paint was slightly creamier and I just want to sort of soften it out a bit but there is no moisture on my brush I'm just using the paint that's on the paper if you want to introduce more paint make sure it's creamier and thicker than what's on there already or at least the same consistency and that way you avoid backgrounds and horrible hard lines and I just thought I'd add a little bit of salt there just to finish off to create some texture and wow the painting has dried and look at that it's gorgeous with all that salt and there is not a background or a hard edge in sight and I'm just going to continue now painting this snowdrop just using a little bit of ultramarine touch of cadmium yellow painting wet on dry using my size 6 brush just building up a little bit of shadow now on the petals I've used a little bit of ultramarine a tiny touch of pink and a little bit of the yellow a little bit of quinacridone gold and I'm just it's very watered down you don't want it too dark especially with light white petals and what I'm doing now to get rid of the any hard edges I'm using my damp brush and pushing that water and paint up to where the tonal value is slightly darker to keep the light area just above that little green center of the snowdrop and I'm just applying now a mixture of the cadmium yellow with a touch of the ultramarine more yellow than blue painting wet on dry with my size 6 brush what I'm doing now is adding a little bit more blue to that and painting this on the right hand side where the darks are because the light is coming from the left so I'm painting this slightly creamier so that it, you don't get any hard edges as that runs into that yellow green. just wetting this left hand petal here and I'm just with very very pale sort of a blue with a tiny touch of pink 
and I'm using my twig there just to score some marks in there as you can see that are on the surface of the snowdrop I'm doing the same on the right hand side working wet in where I've just swapped my size 10 brush I just want to really give this right hand petal a good soak and think of it almost like your background again of how you paint the background and using the same sort of techniques I've just swapped to a smaller brush here my size 4 and I want to mix up a quite a neutral color um, and I've just taken the excess off there on my kitchen towel so it controls the amount of paint that's on my brush and I'm painting damp into damp I'm just painting really really pale sort of marks here making it slightly darker at the top there again using the kitchen towel to control the amount of liquid coming out of my brush but it's a very soft violet so it's ultramarine touch of pink tiny tiny touch of yellow and I'm painting this same color damp into damp onto the petal really building up this detail light to dark I'm actually painting wet on dry I've allowed my painting to dry and I'm just putting some more little details on the petals I could hardly call them darts because they're so light but it's really the ultramarine again with a tiny tiny touch of pink and a little tiny touch of the green or the yellow just make sure that it's very watered down you just want to put these very light details on the petals wet on dry and I'm using a damp brush now just to soften here so you can just blend that back a little bit if especially if you don't feel comfortable and you think it's too strong you can just soften with a damp brush. I'm building up some darks and details now in the center. I've just added a little bit more ultramarine to this little wash and a touch of the yellow wet on dry. I've rinsed my brush there, take the excess off on the kitchen towel and soften and blend that hard edge just to push it back a little bit. It works so well. I'm doing the same now with the petals, the inside of this petal here. I've actually added a touch more pink, slightly warmer in color here. And again, I'm using a damp brush, working from the outside in and then touching that wash and blending. If I went the other way, I would darken that area too much. This way it keeps it in place. And I'm just pulling that sort of pinky sort of grayish wash down to the green area and softening and blending as well. I was in danger of having a back run there because I put a wet wash into a damp wash so I used my kitchen towel took the excess water off my brush and then used that damp brush to soak up that wet paint and it's rescued it or prevented it from having a back run so there's little ways here you can control your watercolor painting whoops <laughs> that would have been a bit of a disaster but um, that's the other thing I usually use my fingertips and things to push things about and boss it about the thing is the more practice you get the more confident you feel so never be too hard on yourself and don't worry if your painting doesn't look exactly like mine mine never looks the same every time I paint it it's different and that's the wonder of it it all you know just that it's the creativity um, we're not slavishly copying it here we're interpreting it so I'm just softening this dark here and I'm working on the leaf here just a slightly a mid green here working wet on dry rinsing my brush using that damp brush to blend back using a little bit of a mid green now just to get a little bit more not so much darks here mid tones it's not that dark here on the leaf here just a touch more blue just to put a little bit of dark in there I was so tempted to use my finger there but I've left it sometimes it's quite good to leave things happy accidents you know see what happens you learn so much more that way in watercolor painting so I'm just building up these details 
So I'm going to just give the painting a little spatter. I do this sometimes to stop myself from fiddling and I like the effect of it and the texture. So I'm just spattering around the edges of the snowdrops and a little in the background, just using some of the leftover green in my palette here and there. I've just added a little bit more yellow actually as well, just to make a slightly lighter green sort of a yellowy green just splodging it on there just having a little bit of fun and even putting it in the center it probably feels um scary paint you know spattering on a white flower if you don't like where the spots spattery spots have gone just have your kitchen towel on standby and lift off and it will be fine i'm just now spattering a little bit of violet as well seeing as it has been part of the background there so it just creates a little bit of dark here and there and a touch more yellow now, if things don't always go right in a watercolour painting, you you know, you sort of the edges need a little bit of smoothing over if you've lost your light, you can always use a little bit of white paint. I'm using Winsor & Newton's white gouache. I'm painting this wet on dry with my size four brush and it's just a tidy up here and there. You don't have to use too much of it and don't get too carried away with it. Just be really strict with yourself and just go, right, I just need to tidy up this and then get out because before you know it you just you you overdo it and I've done it so many times so I'm just cleaning up my edges here and there to stop myself from painting and for a little bit of sparkle I've spattered this white paint just to finish off and I'm really pleased with it and I really hope it's helped you with how to deal with difficult backgrounds back runs and hard edges I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. If you like these sort of tutorials and you'd like to see more of them, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? And for those of you that would like outline sketches for this painting or my recent watercolor tutorials on YouTube, check out my Patreon membership. Just click the link in the top right hand corner and it will give you more details. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.